No blast to Pritisha and uh, Abha Gupta spoke on. Good morning, students. Welcome to my class, and I'm Dr. Ritusha Dodwar. Today, we are going to talk about the management of macular hole. In our previous class, we've already brushed up a little on what is a macular hole and why is it caused. So now we are going to discuss about the management of macular hole. What is a macular hole? Would anybody like to attempt the question here? Any students? It's a small gap in the retina at the level of the macula and this is an OCT imaging. The second picture that we see is a normal OCT image of the normal macula. We have seen and diagnosed the macular hole on an OCT. But what is the slit lamp examination which will help us to, down, uh, to diagnose the full thickness macular hole? It's a good question, right? I want you to go back home and read up on this and tell me the answer tomorrow. This is a very nice diagram depicting exactly why a macular hole and how a macular hole is caused. First, there is vitreous condensation above the macula. There is vitreous traction and there is centrifugal pull and centrifugal traction which leads to gaping of these retinal layers leading to the loss of the retinal layers at the macula. Anyone would like to attempt a staging of macular hole? Any guesses of uh, how it's graded? Okay, I'll help you there. Stage 1 is basically a yellow dot that we see at the macula and on OCT it is the horizontal schisis of the retinal layers. In this case we can always wait and watch. And we can also attempt another uh, newer modality which is the ocriplasmin injection. Ocriplasmin is a proteolytic enzyme. And how does it help us with the macular hole management if it's a proteolytic? Come on guys, be interactive. How does ocriplasmin help us? The yes, very good. Excellent. Smart kid. So anything beyond stage 2, which is a full thickness macular hole with or without a posterior vitreous detachment, we go ahead with the surgery. There are two main principles that we want to attempt with the surgery. First is to relieve all the tangential traction that is either by removing the vitreous condensation and second by the epiretinal membrane removal. And the second principle is to provide a retinal tamponade. We do it with the help of the gases so that the anatomical apposition that we have attained with the surgery is maintained. Here we are attempting a three-port pars plena vitrectomy, a 25 gauge. We are marking the port uh, distance from the limbus at 4 millimeters in the fake patient here. We do a core vitrectomy and stain the remnant vitreous with the help of triamcinolone acetonide. We see that around the disc there are white strands and we are removing the posterior hyaloid attachment from posterior to the anterior and making the expose, uh, we are exposing the internal limiting membrane that we are supposed to you can see that there is a blue color sheen. We are using a finis loop to scrape off from where the vessels are there because the ILM is least adherent at that point. After the flap is obtained, the initial flap, we take a forceps and do a macular axis. What is a macular axis? Just like a capsular axis. We do a tangential traction, a macular axis. And we go 360 degree around it. Usually a 1 